Well, as we know, the San Diego Food Bank and food banks across the region are hard at work providing assistance to a growing number of people and families in need. A new report by San Diego State shows inflation and rising prices are significantly impacting families here. And for more, we're talking to Casey Castillo of San Diego Food Bank and Carl Win Winston, the director of School of Hospitality and Tourism Management at SDSU. Thanks to both of you for coming by today. Thank you for having us. Well, let's start with how the partnership came to be and why specifically we chose to do it this way. Step me through what the process was like, because we used the word survey, but that's not actually accurate. You were really interviewing people. Talk about that process. Sure. You can imagine this is a very sensitive topic for people. We're talking about food insecurity, people who are depending on the largesse of strangers to support them in their quest for food. And so going in and saying, are you hungry, is not such a good idea. And so what we worked with the food bank staff to develop an interview process it was actually in people's local language, so the majority of the interviews were actually done in Spanish, Tagalog, and in English. And it was a dialogue with the people using the food bank services to pull the information out so that we could give the food bank an objective look at who's actually using their services. And Casey, how valuable is this information? Because a lot of times numbers are thrown out there, and I think it's hard for people to put it on an individual basis. How has this changed the food bank's approach uh, to being able to meet people where they are? So it's a big deal, and when I was looking at doing doing this about a year and a half ago, everybody said, talk to Carl Winston, talk to SDSU, and they were right. It was a rigorous uh, process. Uh, we were thrilled with the results. Uh, we looked at it really with two objectives. One, we wanted to understand the economic impact um, that our services have in San Diego County, and two, and most importantly, we wanted to know um, about the characteristics of our recipients uh, and what their needs are. What was maybe something that stuck out to you as you started compiling this information, looking at it in a way that could be helpful for an organization like the Food Bank to really uh, actualize? What was something that maybe surprised you? I think maybe 57% of the people using the services were using it for less than a year. Wow. Which sort of tells you these people didn't need permanent support. They needed a hand to get them through a bad patch. And that too, when you talk about the average uh, income, what is that for these people who are trying to survive in a city like San Diego? So the household uh, income of our respondents was about $24,000. Can you believe that? In San Diego, California. In San Diego. You know, we learned a lot of great things. Um, uh, we, the characteristics, uh, characteristics we wanted to learn were uh, why are they using our services, for how long, how far are they traveling to our distribution sites? Um, uh, job status, uh, ethnicity, yeah. house size, and we learned some interesting things. 76% uh, of those that responded said they're coming to us because of rising costs, so directly related to inflation. 45% because they're not making enough money, their salary is not keeping up with inflation, and 25% are seniors living on a fixed income. And did those numbers reveal anything of insight of how to approach this in a way that's actually going to make a difference, or were you just able to see the the need is there and now we have to have people step up. I think I'll, I'll have Casey speak more to this, but there was a, I think there's an opportunity to look at the distribution strategy, which is extremely complex, nuanced, and uh, honestly very high impact from what we were able to look at. How has that changed or how will it change? So we were interested too to see if there were any shifts from COVID, right? Yeah. There were some things that we knew before COVID, we wanted to see if they are still there now or if things change. Uh, one of the things that, was, uh, things that was interesting is about 50% of our respondents live within three miles of our distribution sites. Well, we'd like that number, uh, the percentage to go up and the number of distribution sites to go up as well. So we'll target those areas, maybe with our mobile pantries, other things like that, and we'll devise other strategies to um, fill those gaps that we found. And last question for both of you. I mean, what was the takeaway and maybe what do you hope viewers who are listening to this and to hear SDSU partnering with, of course, the food bank, but on a level of the school community is just as much a part of this community as any piece of the puzzle and that we can all play a part in hopefully alleviating the need. Yeah, this is a this is truly a charitable organization and part of our mission at the university is to do public service. So for the faculty and staff who got to work on this and the students honestly who we employed who did those interviews and delivered them compassionately with care it was a chance to give back 
and in a really powerful way to a community that is very, uh, I run a school of hospitality and we're, we wanted to be hospitable to our own people and it was a great opportunity to do that. And what a fantastic thing for those students. Any last words? Casey? Absolutely. Well, there's a misconception I think and there has been historically across the country for food banks that, and that's that we serve primarily the homeless. It's actually a very small percentage of who we serve and that through the survey, 73% uh, of our respondents either had a full-time job or part-time job. So the 400,000 people we're serving a month, they are working. Working, uh, but still struggling. Uh, so we want people to know that there are still these food insecurity challenges in San Diego County, and we want them to know that we're here to help. And they can do and be a part of this change as well by, of course, donating, volunteering, whether that's monetarily or with their time. Absolutely, food drives as well. Food drives as well. There's so many great chances. Thank you both for coming in the studio to break this down. What a fascinating, uh, you know, survey and interview process, and hopefully going to make some big changes. Thank you.